So just before we start, as this is gonna be a rather chunky video, uh, I'll include timestamps in the description. And also at the end, I'm gonna take you on an actual update walk around the greenhouse and show you what's been growing, what's been going on, the capsicums, the tomatoes, uh, pak choy that I've added into the NFT, etc. So if you wanna watch that update, uh, just hit the timestamps in the description and I hope you enjoy the video. Welcome back to Hucho's. Today on Hucho's, we're gonna be building this. This is a hydroponic orchard filled with grapefruit, lemons, limes, oranges, macadamias, and lemonade trees. As well as that, we're gonna be planting into this. This is my new root vegetable system. So in this, I'll be planting spring onion, which was actually a viewer's choice, Radish, shallot, beetroot, onion, leek, carrot, and shallots. I'll also be planting some ginger, and I'll be replanting some of the turmeric that I pulled out of my last system. So, full system, full planting, and I'm really excited to grow some root vegetables in hydroponics. But first, I need to disassemble the old rain gutter grow system to make the new root vegetable system. I was actually really conflicted about ending this system because I was getting so many tomatoes off it. Uh, the pumpkins were going really well. The chili bushes, everything was thriving, but it just wasn't properly managed and there were too many pests. I was losing a heap of tomatoes, as you can see on the ground there. And I just needed a fresh start with a new system. So I've got enough tomatoes obviously in the greenhouse and I wanted to set up a root vegetable system. So what I'm doing here is I'm just recycling all of the cocoa. I'm removing as much organic matter as possible. You can see the roots um, around the bottom of those tubs and I had to remove all those from the cocoa. And you can see here as uh, I refill, um, I didn't get all of the roots out, but I got most of them out. The cocoa perlite will be absolutely fine with a little bit of organic matter in it. And then I just refilled all the tubs and we could start afresh. Now, because I've been so bad um, at remembering the plants that I've been putting in my systems, I'm gonna actually go ahead and label all of these plants. Go me, I'm finally learning. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay out all the seed packets in their respective tubs, and then I'll get to labeling them all, and then we can plant them. Okay, so I'm in editing, and the planting of vegetable seeds is monotonously boring. So uh, I'm gonna tack that onto the end of the video. If you really wanna see me plant out the root vegetable system, you can watch at the end. Uh, other than that, just read your seed packets and you'll know what to do. Back to the video. Alrighty, now that we've got all of our root vegetables and raspberries set up in our root vegetable system, we can head over and set up our hydroponic citrus system. So this system I made from scratch using the 3D printable parts that are available on my Patreon. Uh, I made it on my own and obviously had a little bit of trouble. Uh, so I designed a few extra parts specifically for this system. We'll have a look at those a little later. Essentially they work with the existing rain gutter grow systems. So I set up the system, I uh, made sure it was level. If you wanna see how to set up one of these systems, I'll put a link just above me. Obviously I didn't do it all on my own. Uh, so I leveled the system, I set up the pots. Now with these pots, I've got two net cups in each pot and uh, I just placed them into the pots and filled up the bottom with a little bit of cocoa perlite. The cocoa perlite ratio is the same as usual. It's 60% uh, cocoa and 40% perlite. This just gives you that nice moisture to oxygen ratio. So I mixed that up and added it into the bottoms of the containers before I started moving the macadamias from the old system. This is a volunteer kale that popped up in one of my macadamia trees that was being watered with the blue mat system. So I just removed it and headed over to the chicken pen and gave them something to eat. The blue mat system really wasn't the ideal system for these plants. 
I thought it might work well for top watering them, but I found it rather problematic as it drained my res a few times or the sensors would just not be sensitive enough and they wouldn't water the plants enough. So it was a little bit too temperamental uh, for my liking, especially with the amount that I really wasn't watching it. So I just filled up the bottom of those pots with um, some cocoa to start the wicking and then filled around the macadamias uh, that I put into this system. I did the same for the other tree and this one actually uh, had a bit more trouble getting in because the cocoa was a bit more moist. So now that the macadamias are potted up, let's have a look at the root systems of these ones. This is the grapefruit, lime and eureka lemon that have been in the rain gutter grow system over where I had it before all this time. And I've actually seen evidence that the root systems are, are doing really well. They're probably almost outgrowing all these pots, which is why I'm upsizing the pots because more roots equals more fruits. Let's unpot these, repot them into these larger pots and have a look at the root systems while we do that. Now, while I'm doing this, I'm gonna do some adjustments to the trees themselves. As you can see, this one's falling over. So this one's getting some growth on the lower limbs of the tree and I'm gonna cut them back. I'm also going to cut them back about a third because we're just going into spring. First of all, let's transplant them. Now, in the bottom of all of these pots, I have two net cups. The holes for the net cups in the bottom of the pots are 50 millimeters. Now, the holes in the rain gutter grow systems now are 64 millimeters, which gives me uh, a little bit of human error in drilling the holes. And it also makes it easy for me to put them in and pull them out uh, when there's roots that have actually gone down into the nutrient solution. So as you can see, the roots have come out the bottom there. Just gonna get these clay balls off the top. Now the clay balls were just there um, to stop algae growing on top and also prevents some weeds. Um, some do get through though. So I'm just gonna pull this out. Look at that. They're really healthy roots. I reckon I'm repotting this at the perfect time. All the endings are here, so they're gonna just fan out as soon as I put it into this system. And now I can just fill around. And again. And that's the root system. Really healthy, really nice. Very nice. All right. And while I'm here, I'm gonna do a little bit of maintenance. So I'm gonna remove these lower branches and I'm gonna remove a third. So I'm just gonna take the tips and off this one, I'm gonna take uh, the branches that are causing it to fall. So I'm gonna take this one and this one like that. I don't want this growing too far out this way either, so I'll take this one as well, just before this fruit. Very good. Okay, now we've freed up this central section. Uh, I'm gonna put the rain gutter in, and then we can plant some more citrus. So this one is a blood navel orange, a container lemonade tree. This one is a dwarf Tahitian lime, and this one is a container Villa Franca. Let's put the rain gutter in, drill holes in the pots that I transplanted the macadamias out of, and we can start planting in the rest of our trees. So while we're here, uh, the spacing for these pots is 30 centimeters, 300 millimeter, and then each one of these holes is 300 millimeters apart. From then up to the float, it goes 60 between pots, then 30, and 60 between pots, then 30. So that's how I've spaced out these citrus trees. Uh, I'm hoping that gives me enough room. If it doesn't, I can always just remove the middle pot uh, and then have something smaller in there like a garden bed or something that uses the same nutrients. Now with these citrus, I'm not gonna wash the roots or anything. All I'm gonna do is fill around them with cocoa. So, the reason I'm doing this is because the amount of soil in there compared to the entire pot is negligible and I'm not particularly worried. Uh, if there are problems down the line, I'll let you know. But the roots will venture out like they have with the other plants. Eventually that soil will lose all its nutritional content anyway and just become part of 
the nutritionless media. And there we go. I've knocked a little bit of soil off straight into the cocoa perlite. And we just make sure not to bury that graft. So now I'm just going to do the same for the rest of them. Now I'm just going to water them in. I can add in the float valves and plumb it up. But I'll probably leave that till tomorrow um, once these have all washed through. Let's water them in. I'm probably going to start off by watering these guys in with one watering can full of water first and then I'll do a watering can full of hydroponic nutrient. Just so that it gives them a little bit of time to adjust. There we go. Okay, so water first and then one can of hydroponic nutrient in each. And I'll go through it and do that for all of them. Okay, so it's the next day and we had a huge rainstorm last night, which has completely messed up the work area, which is fantastic. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna go along. I siliconed in uh, the 13 millimeter barbs last night and they should be dry by now, <clears throat> hopefully. And I'm just gonna add in my tap and my piece of hose onto the end so I can control the flow when I wanna drain these. And at the other end, we can add in our float valves. While I'm setting this up, this is probably as good a time as any to show you the new design for the float covers that I've made. Uh, so these just pair with the ends and I've added into the ends two little notches uh, that these will just clip over. So you just notch the ends in like this and you've got a float cover and that just flips back when you want to check it. How's that? So that'll protect uh, the nutrient solution from light and it'll protect the float from accidentally being pressed down and overfilling and causing your system to overflow. These are available in the exact same file as these and they're optional. So I've left the old style and you can add in this if you want to make your own float covers. And there we go. System's all plumbed up. You can turn it on. Sweet as. Just gotta make sure these are all turned off. So let me take you around and give you some updates on the previous systems that you've seen me build throughout the history of Huchos. So this is the potato system. Now, if you haven't seen this build, that's because I haven't released it yet. Um, I filmed the entire build, uh, but I've been giving you updates along the way just to give you a little bit of a taste of what's going on. Can't exactly hide it, can I? <laughs> They're flowering at the moment. We were hit by a storm the other day, right after I built this system, and all the potato plants, they were in a really nice, healthy, self-standing position, and now they've all been hammered by the rain, so they're all, some of them are snapped off over here, and fallen down, but they're still alive and they're still doing really well. I'm really looking forward to seeing what I get out of this system. There's actually a colony of predatory ladybugs living within this system. Uh, so I haven't treated it with any pesticides or anything. I've just been letting them go crazy. So let's head into the greenhouse and see how the plants are going. So I'll start off with the hooch buckets. The hooch buckets are doing fantastically. The bell capsicums that I've got in the system are really healthy. The more mature ones are bearing fruit, all of them. I did damage the leaves a little when I oversprayed pyrethrums, which is a pesticide I was using to control aphids within some of the flowers. I now know only to spray a light mist and that's enough, whereas I was drenching them before, which is bad practice apparently. 
down in front of the fruiting bell caps, we've got the strawberries. And the strawberries are flourishing. They're in flower now, I've let them start flowering. And we've got fruit on some of them. They've got runners, which I'll then root into one of the other hooch adapters, and I'll use it to create more strawberries. In this hooch adapter down here, I was just utilizing some of the pak choy that I had, had no place to put, and I just wanted to pack it full of as many pak choy as possible, and it's doing really well. Obviously, it's overcrowded. I'll still be able to harvest some young, healthy pak choy. Up here, I've got some eggplant, and because it's so early in the day and the sun's pretty intense at this point in time, uh, the leaves are curling upwards, but as you can see in the video I took yesterday afternoon, the leaves will just fan out once there's less intense sun. They'll be absolutely fine a little later in the day. Over in the NFT, we've got some wasabi greens. We've also got some pak choy, which is going really well. And I'm gonna harvest that and eat that very soon. We've got a bell capsicum that I kind of forgot about in the system, and it's in full fruit. They are smaller, however, and I believe that's due to uh, the smaller root size that it can achieve in the NFT. It seems to be having a, a good time. The overall plant size is a lot smaller and the leaf size, it's not doing quite as well as the ones in the hooch buckets, but it's an interesting little experiment that's happening either way. The round pipe hydroponic rain gutter grow system tomatoes. They're doing fantastically. Now, I've had to start stringing them up because they're getting to that size where they're falling over in the system and behind me, there's a heap that are falling over and I just don't have the strings and the hooks yet. So, I will be stringing them up, but the tomatoes are doing really well. You can see the growth on the tips of the tomatoes is fantastic and most, if not all of the tomatoes are growing perfectly. There are a couple down the end that are having a problem, uh, but that's purely because I don't think that they rooted properly in the starter plugs that I started them in. Now up to the right of your screen, you can see uh, some lettuce seedlings that I put in there yesterday. Now I left them way too long, they got really leggy, and I usually wanna show you guys everything that happens in this greenhouse because it's as much yours as it is mine. All I did was plant them, which you've seen me do a hundred times before. Something that has been interesting me is the nutrient and EC within these systems, how it hasn't been getting leached out by the plants, which is strange because this is just like a small reservoir. Um, you would think that the plants would favor water or nutrition, but they seem to be taking it at the exact same rate, which is fantastic. So let's have a look at the ECs within these systems. Now, this isn't to say that the plants definitely won't strip out the nutrients or the water more, depending on the environment. It's just, I've noticed recently that the EC and the pH of these systems has stayed pretty steady, which is uh, really good. Actually, first, the EC in my reservoir is really hard to get to because it's quite low at the moment. The reason it's low is because uh, one of the citrus systems, I had the float valve too high and it drained half my res last night. Woo! So the pH is 6.5 and the EC is 2.16. And the nutrient that's in the rain gutter growth systems is 2.26, slightly like 0.1 higher and the pH is 6.5. So the plants are almost using the exact same ratio of water and nutrients, which is fantastic. It just means that I don't have to um, reset these systems very often. Uh, and by reset, I mean drain this out and start with a new nutrient. So 6.6 .6 and EC, 2.17. So that's exactly the same as the res, which means that this system is using water and nutrients at the same rate. Whether they're using all of the nutrients in the spectrum of nutrients that is going into this at the same rate may differ. They could be taking up calcium or potassium, which would throw this reading off in the sense that my EC might be the same but the ratio of elements in the res is different to this because they're being selectively uptaken. After a certain amount of time, I will empty out these systems even though uh, they are staying the same EC, but there's really no need to do that until you start seeing signs of a nutrient deficiency. Very interesting. And these are the Dutch bucket tomatoes. 
Now, these have been going really well. Now, I have had a leaf spot, so I have been treating them with an antifungal, uh, which is Mancozeb. And that's also the reason that I've removed a lot of the foliage on the ones that are a bit more bare. Now, I have added in something to the res, which I wanna show you. So this is the res for the Dutch bucket tomatoes. And as you can see, I now have two float valves. This float valve refills uh, the res with water. And this float valve refills the res with hydroponic nutrients. So what I can do is I can turn off the nutrient refill and refill with water if I want, or when I drain the res from time to time when I want to replenish the nutrient, uh, I can drain the res, turn off the water refill, turn on the nutrient refill, let it refill and come back to it in my own time and then as the plants are using the nutrient um, or selectively using the water, I can have it top up with either nutrient or water, depending on the environmental conditions. Sometimes the plants are using nutrient and water at the same rate, at which point I'll have the nutrient refill. But sometimes like in summer, when it's just so hot and the plants are transpiring way too much, for me to top up with nutrient, I will top up with water instead. I can just adjust my top up style to the environmental conditions at the time. So at the moment, for the past few days, I've actually been topping up with hydroponic nutrient only, no water. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna test the EC and we'll see what we've got. So the EC is 2.1. The plants have actually been selectively using nutrient faster than this has been topping it up, which means I'm gonna leave the nutrients topping up the moment because uh, there is no concentration of nutrients in this system. So once I notice the EC start to rise in the hotter months because the plants are selectively using more water, I'll turn this top up off and I'll turn the fresh water top up on. And then I can just keep an eye on the nutrients and add nutrients when needed. So the environmental conditions are gonna change throughout the year and the plants requirements are gonna change throughout the grow as well. Because they're heavily fruiting at the moment, they're selectively taking out a lot of nutrition. This system just allows you to adjust your top up depending on the plants requirements and the environment. And just for reference, the pH of this system is 6.2. Last but not least, let's have a look at the hydroponic wasabi. Uh, I don't like lifting this up. It's rather hot today. I did actually add in some more wasabi. Just little ones, just tube stock. Um, I didn't know how else. Oh, I'm just gonna take the whole thing off, I guess. I have to do this quickly. There they are. <laughs> they're doing really well. Look at them. Uh, they're gonna start to droop really fast because they do not like sun at all. So I'm just gonna quickly, I'll get you a shot of them, really quickly, um, and then throw that cover back on. But you can see uh, the little tube stock that I've added in, um, some of which died, but uh, I'm hoping uh, to get some of them through. But they're doing really, really well. As you can see, they're all facing out this way because this way is where the light is coming in. Uh, and it's just the right amount of light, I reckon. So I'm gonna go and throw that cover back on right now time lapse camera back up make sure there's not too much light going in and there you have it hydroponic wasabi in queensland australia so it can be done uh whether or not it lasts the summer you'll see i guess happy hydroponicking thanks for watching and i'll see you next time on who chose <laughs> <laughs> so the two raspberries can go in the large one. Shallots, shallots, ginger, 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 carrots, onion. So this is early Californian red onion. It's going to make some bros. Just sprinkle them in like that. Oh, oh wow. There's a lot of red onion in there now. <laughs> oh no. 
Well, this side's gonna be extremely <laughs> populated. I guess I'll just cover them up. No one needs to see that. Only you and I know about that. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna overpopulate the whole bed now. Uh, sweet. <laughs> uh, next. All right, beetroot. Look pretty old. Hopefully we'll get a strike. If they don't strike, I'll just replant, I guess. Do the other tub. All right, so these spring onions were actually um, an idea by one of our members on the Facebook group. Um, here's the post. And uh, I was actually making this system when they said, uh, have you ever planted spring onions? <laughs> well, thank you for the idea. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Jump on the Facebook group if you do want to share your ideas or, you know, just ask questions or whatever, um, or generally interact with like-minded people. So let's plant some spring onion. Spring onion, six inches apart, well-cultivated, fertile soil. Well, no soil here. We've already got, that is a tomato plant. That is a tomato seedling from the sheer quantity of tomatoes that were coming up, uh, that, that have seeded into this cocoa before. Well, well, the same as the onion seeds. I guess they are spring onion. Huh, go figure. More is better. Too much is never enough. And stuff like that. I'm excited to see all of these things pop up at once. Now the reason I'm planting is obviously because we are going into spring. And that's the appropriate time to plant, I guess. We're about five days away from spring, spring at the moment. A little bit ahead of myself. Cover them up. Next. Now these two beds are the shallots and I'm giving them a ton of space um, because the planting instructions say to give them a bit more space than the rest of the seed packets. So I'm just gonna push them straight down. You can tell the rooted end, I guess. Use your common sense. <laughs> I'll do the same over here. There we go. Now these ones I'm really excited for. Now, obviously not root vegetables. Raspberries. Raspberries in hydroponics. Spring is such a fantastic time of the year. You really start to appreciate it when you deep dive into gardening. So, interesting. Plant depth, five centimeters. Okay, that, very, I wanna get that little bit of greenery out so that it knows where to go. Look at that. There we go, that's a raspberry. <laughs> a hydroponic raspberry. And again, now, you may have guessed, but I've never seen a raspberry bush before. Someone has mentioned to me that they are spiky and bushy. This definitely may not be the best placement for these. But the beauty of hydroponics is you're not committing them to the ground. <laughs> I can always move them. Turmeric, I'm gonna plant these little bulbs um, because I reckon the big ones I can use. So I'll just, just plant everywhere, I guess. In there, in there. I've got heaps of them, I probably don't need as many as I've got over here. I, that's the beauty of things that just continue to multiply. Maybe I should plant some more turmeric. I might do another whole tub. I've got a spare spot over there, I'll do some more. <clears throat> so these are leeks. I'm just gonna do the same. I'm just gonna plant them in rows. Carrot, carrots. These went so well last time. All right, so. I'm actually not even gonna make rows out of this one. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull half the bed back. And just a healthy sprinkle. Now, over and again, healthy sprinkle again. And back over, we're good. Well, this ginger's easy. I'm just gonna do that <laughs> and a bit of that. <laughs> To the radish. <clears throat> this one should be, I guess, the quickest to germinate and come to full term, I think, because radishes are notoriously fast. Whoa, look at them. 
those. Look at those. Blue. That's crazy. They're so blue. We'll do the same as I did with the carrots. Done.